So in today's video, we're going to paint another simple and cozy winter scene like this. The kind of cutaway view here is a really fun perspective, and I borrowed this concept from the artist Jeremy Miranda. So the watercolor effect here is coming from a paper texture and the Alpine Forest brush kit, and I'll put links to all of this in the description. The first thing you need to do is grab the fuzzy round brush and do a quick background wash. After that, you can go ahead and grab the water blender and at the largest size, just kind of soften this up and spread it around. And just to add a little more texture, I'm also going to use the salty splatter blender and uh, tap that one around just to add this kind of uh, splatter texture there. Next, I'm going to use some of the pine tree brushes. So this kit has a lot of these, but mostly I'm just going to stick to these two up here. And at the largest size for that one, maybe actually around 70%, I'll do a line of pine trees. And I want to do one more row of pine trees, but I'm going to make sure I darken this color a little bit more. And I'm going to make sure these stay towards the edges. And after the pine trees are all done, I'm uh, once again going to grab a water blender. I'll use the misty one this time. Not quite the largest size, and I'm going to blend it down here extremely soft because this is actually where the house is going to be. But up towards the top, I'm going to kind of just tap the brush lightly and this will break up the outline, but it's still going to keep a lot of the structure of the pine trees there. And now the last step here for this background scene is just to add a little bit of snow. So I'm going to choose pure white. I'm going to change to the snowy speckles brush and maybe around 40 or 50%, I'll just add some uh, snow all over this scene. And the finished background here is very cold and chaotic, and that's intentional because I'm trying to contrast it with the house in the foreground. Now the house is going to be on its own layer, so I'll make a new layer above the background, and I'm going to choose a pretty warm uh, yellow tone like this. For the brush, I'll use the Forrester Fine Liner, and I'm just going to sketch out a triangle shape here. And after that, I can just drag the color to uh, quickly fill it in. Then I'm going to select pure black and give this a kind of a thin outline. I'm also going to add some feet. Now all the interior detail is going to be done on several different layers. And I think this is a really useful technique. So first I'll make a new layer above the house. I'm going to select a warm gray color. And uh, this layer, this new layer, I'm going to set the transparency mode to multiply. And then I'll use this uh, Forrester Fine Liner brush around 10% and quickly rough out some basic details in the interior. And I also like to add a couple of potted plants. I think it also provides a lot of contrast with the interior and the exterior. And also, I think a couple of pendant lights uh, look really nice as well. Now with the first layer of detail done, uh, you can see it's all on this one layer set to multiply. And I can lower the opacity just set it to a point where uh, it looks pretty good but it's not like pure black or anything. Next I'll make a new layer. I'm also going to set this one to multiply as well. And I'll set the transparency much lower than the previous layer. And I'll use the same color, same brush. And you'll see when I color this time, it adds like another shade of gray, like a lighter version. And I'm going to use this to go through and add a couple of more lighter details and also some shadows. And uh, once again, all these secondary details are on their own layer, and I can kind of refine the opacity and I think in this case make them a little bit lighter. And then the final pass for the shadows will be on yet another layer, also set to multiply, but very, 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 very faint. And these ones are just going to be kind of very, very loose and uh, environmental. A lot of side to side stuff as well like this. Mm -hmm. 
And next, after all the shadows are done, I can move on and do some of the lighting. So I'll make that on its own layer as well. I'm gonna select a very bright, almost white yellow color. And I'll just rough out where these uh, pendant lights are gonna cast a light. And then I'm also gonna try to imagine where this light might be reflecting in the scene. So for example, this light is probably gonna be reflecting pretty strongly on those leaves and the top of the bed as well. And I'm gonna go through and add some details like that, but uh, pretty sparingly. And next, to make the lighting look more realistic, I'm gonna change the transparency mode from normal down to add lower it to zero, and then slowly raise it back up just until those lights are strong enough that they look realistic, but not like oversaturated and blown out like that. I think around 20% looks pretty good in this case. And then the final layer of detail, and this one is especially optional, is just kind of a layer of black lines. So I'll make a new layer for that, select pure black, same brush that I've been using, just a little bit smaller this time. And I'm gonna go in there very carefully and add some black lines. And the house at this point is pretty much done. So I'm just gonna merge all the layers for that together just to keep the layers panel a little more organized. And after it's all on one layer, it's much easier to kind of adjust the colors. So in this case, I wanna make it a little more orange. There we go, that's pretty good. If you want to, you can add a little staircase here in the front. And I'm just gonna use the same Forster Fine Liner and two different shades of this warm brown tone. Now the scene here is almost done. I just need to kind of tie the house in with the background. Right now they look a little bit uh, disjointed. It's also a great time to adjust the size of the house because it's all on its own layer. So I think I'll make it a little bit larger. There we go. And to add a shadow, I wanna make sure that the background here is selected, the background wash. I'll use the selection tool set to freehand and I'll add a shadow just under the house like this. I think I'll do a stepped shadow, so I'll do a smaller one, kind of just inside of it. Next, if you want to, you can add a very, very light white border around the house. And this is something that would happen with traditional watercolor if you were using masking fluid. So the way to do that is uh, select the house, make a new layer above it. I'm gonna select pure white, and I'll use the Forster Fine Liner maybe around uh, eight or 10%. And I'll just follow the edge of the house like this. And after that, you can lower the transparency of this white line and just set it to a point where it helps the house kind of jump out a little bit more, but it's not too strong. I think about 20 or 30% is pretty good. And another thing you can do to tie this scene together is add some footsteps here. So I'm gonna do it in the foreground. I'll make a layer above everything again. Any kind of random, cold, uh, dark color like that. Forrester Fine Liner. And I'll just do an interesting pattern like this. And if you want to, you can also lower the transparency of that layer, uh, just in case they end up being too dark. I think around 60% looks good in this case. And once again, just to keep it simple, I'll merge everything together onto one layer. Now the painting at this point looks pretty cool, but it has some issues with the border. I know in some cases you, you might like this abstract border, but there's an easy way to kind of square everything off. So I'll zoom all the way out so I can see everything. And uh, this only works if everything's merged together onto one layer. I'll use the arrow tool, and I'm just gonna move it off the edge and then reselect the arrow tool. And each time I do that, it just sort of clips it off. And in some cases like this, where it, it seems like I could get a little bit more if I could just fill that in, what I'm gonna do is grab the Misty Water Blender and kind of pull out the edge there, the corner. There we go, and then I can try it again. And there we go, this cozy winter scene is all done. And here's the final result. 
So as I mentioned earlier, uh, this concept is from the artist Jeremy Miranda. He often creates these sort of impossible, quirky perspectives that manage to show ordinary scenes but in a new, surprising way. And I'll put a link to his website uh, in the description. And as always, uh, if you think I've earned it, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again for your support, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.